share. All right, I'll kick us off. All right, everybody ready to get started? Yes, sir. Knock this out. Let's see what we got here. The Sixth Sense. The door to the Temple of Wisdom, the 13th step towards riches. The 13th step, the 13th principle is known as the Sixth Sense through which infinite intelligence may and will communicate voluntarily without any effort from or demand by the individual. This principle is the apex of the philosophy. It can be assimilated, understood, and applied only by first mastering the other 12 principles. The sixth sense is the portion of the subconscious mind, which has been referred to as the creative imagination. It has also been referred to as receiving set, as the receiving set through which ideas, plans, and thoughts flash into the mind. The flashes are sometimes called hunches or inspirations. The sixth sense defies uh, description. It cannot be de described to a person who has not mastered the other principles of this philosophy because such a person has no knowledge or no, under no experience with which the sixth sense may be compared. Understanding the sixth sense comes by comes only by meditation through the mind developed from within. The sixth sense probably is the medium of the contact between the finite mind of man and the in infinite intelligence. And for this reason, it is a mixture of both the mental and the spiritual. It is believed to be the point at which the mind of a man contacts the universal mind. After you have mastered the principles described in this book, you will be prepared to accept the truth, a statement which may otherwise be indescribable to you, namely. Through the aid of the sixth sense, you will be warned of impeding dangers in time to avoid them and notified of opportunities in time to embrace them. There comes to your aid and to your, to your biting to your bidding with the development of the sixth sense, a guardian angel who will open to you at times the door of the temple of wisdom. Whether or not this is the statement of truth, you will never accept, you will never know except by following the instructions described in the pages of the book or similar, some similar method of procedure. The author is not a believer in nor an advocate of miracles for the reason that has enough knowledge of nature to understand the nature never deviates from her established laws. Some of her laws are so incomprehensible that they produce what appear to be miracles. The sixth sense comes as near to being a miracle as anything I've ever experienced. And it appears so only because I do not understand the method by which the principle is operated. This much the author does know, and there is a power or a first cause or an intelligence which permeates every atom of matter and embraces every unit of energy uh, perceivable to man. One second. That the infinite intelligence response to the law of gravity following night but with day and winter with summer, each maintaining its own proper place and relationship to others. This intelligence may, through the principles of, philo of the philosophy, be induced to the aid in transmuting desires into concrete or material form. The author has knowledge because he has experimented with it and has experimented it, experienced it. Step by step through the preceding chapters, 
you have been led to this to this the last principle if you if you have mastered each of the preceding principles you are now prepared to accept without being skeptical the stupendous claims are made here if you have not mastered the other principles you must do so before you may determine definitely whether or not the claims made in this chapter are fact or fiction. While I was passing through the age of heroship, I found myself trying to Im imitate those whom I most admired. Moreover, I discovered that the element of faith with which I endeavored to, to imitate my idols gave the great capacity to do so quite successfully. I have never entirely divested myself into the habit of heroship, although I have passed the age commonly given over to such. My experience has taught me that, that the, the next best thing to being truly great is to emulate the great by feeling and action as nearly as possible. Long before I tried, long before I had ever written a line of publication or endeavored to deliver a speech in public, I followed the habit of reshaping my own character by trying to imitate the nine men whose lives, whose lives I, and life works had been uh, most impressed to me. These nine men were Emerson, Payne, Edison, Darwin, Lincoln, Burbank, Napoleon, Ford, and Carnegie. Take over, Dave. I'll jump in if you want. Go ahead, Dave. Go ahead, Dave. All right. All right. Sorry I'm late, guys, but... Uh, no, welcome. You know how it is. <laughs> I'm working. All right. Every night, over a long period of years, I held an imaginary council meeting... Bring us food with, up. With, Will you bring hmm? food, food up? Do what? What happened? Oh, okay. I think uh, that was Tyrone talking. My bad, my bad. I thought I was right. um, every, every night over a long period of years, I held an imaginary council meeting with this group whom I call my invisible counselors. The procedure was this. Just before going to sleep at night, I would shut my eyes and see, in my imagination, this group of men seated with me around my council table. Here, I had not only an opportunity to sit among those who I consider to be great, but I actually dominated the group by serving as the chairman. I had a very definite purpose in indulging my imagination through these, um, wait a minute, I had to, through, these, um, through these nightly meetings. My purpose was to rebuild my own character so it would represent a composite of the characters of my imaginary counselors realizing as I did early in life that I had, I had to overcome the handicap of birth in an, in an environment of ignorance and superstition. I deliberately assigned myself the task of voluntarily, voluntary rebirth through, this, through the method described here, building character through auto-suggestion. Being an earnest student of psychology, I knew, of course, that all men have become what they are because of their dominating thoughts and desires. I knew that every deeply seated desire has the effect of causing one to seek outward expression through which that desire may transmute into reality. I knew that self-suggestion is a powerful factor in building character. That it is. In fact, the sole principle through this character, through which this character is built or built it. With this knowledge of principles of mind operation, I was fairly armed with the equipment needed to in rebuilding my character. In these imaginary council meetings, I called on my cabinet members for the knowledge I wish each to contribute, addressing myself to each member in audible words as follows. Mr. Emerson, I desire to acquire from you the marvelous understanding of nature 
which distinguish your life. I ask that you make an, an impress upon my subconscious mind of whatever qualities you possess, which enable you to understand and adapt yourself to the laws of nature. I ask that you assist me in reaching and drawing upon whatever sources of knowledge are available to this end. Mr. Burbank, I request that you pass on to me the knowledge which enable you to so harmonize the laws of nature that you cause the cactus to shed its thorns and become an edible food. Give me access to the knowledge which enable you to make two blades of grass grow where there grew, where there where one grew before. Help you to blend the coloring of the flowers with more splendor and harmony for you alone than uh, have successfully gilded the lily. Napoleon, I desire to acquire from you by emulation the marvelous ability you possess to inspire men, to arouse them to greater and more determined spirit of action, also to acquire the spirit of enduring faith, which enable you to turn defeat into victory, to sur sur surmount staggering obstacles. Emperor of fate, king of chance, man of destiny, I salute you. Mr. Payne, I desire to acquire from you the freedom of thought and the courage and the clarity with which to express convictions which so distinguish you. Mr. Darwin, I wish to acquire from you the marvelous patience, the ability to study cause and effect without bias and prejudice, so exemplified by you in the field of natural science. Mr. Lincoln, I desire to build in your in, into my own character the keen sense of justice, the untiring spirit of patience, the sense of humor, the human understanding, and the tolerance which you which which were your distinguishing characteristics. Mr. Carnegie, I am already indebted to you for my choice of a life work, which has brought me great happiness and peace of mind. I wish to acquire a thorough understanding of the principles of organized effort, which you use so effectively in the building of a great industrial enterprise. Mr. Ford, you have been among the most helpful of the men who have supplied much of the material essential to my work. I wish to acquire your spirit of persistence, determination, poise, and self-confidence, which have enabled you to master poverty, organize, unify, and simplify human effort so that I may help others to follow in your footsteps. Mr. Edison, I have seated you nearest to me at my right because of the personal cooperation you have given me during my research in the causes of success and failure. I wish to acquire from you the marvelous spirit of faith with which you have uncovered so many natural secrets, the spirit of unremitting toil with which you so often wrestle victory from defeat. My method of addressing the members of this imaginary cabinet would vary according to the traits of characters in which I was, for the moment, most interested in acquiring. I studied the records of their lives with painstaking care. After some months of this nightly procedure, I was astounded by the discovery that, that these imaginary figures became apparently real. Each of these nine men developed individual characteristics which surprised me. For example, Lincoln developed the habit of always being late when walking around in solemn parade. When he came, he walked very slowly with his hands clasped behind him. And once in a while, he would stop as he passed and rest his hands momentarily on my shoulder. He always wore an expression of seriousness upon his face. Rarely did I see him smile. The cares of a sundered nation made him grave. This was not true of the others. Burbank and Payne often indulged in witty rep rep repartee, which seems at times to shock the other members of the cabinet. One night, Payne suggested that I prepare a lecture on the age of reason and deliver it from the pulpit of a church, which I formerly attended. Many around the table laughed heartily at the suggestion. 
not Napoleon. He drew his mouth down at the corners and groaned so loudly that all turned and looked at him with amazement. To him, the church was but a pawn of the state, not to be reformed, but to be used as a convenient insider to mass activity by the people. On one occasion, Burbank was late. And when he came, he was excited with enthusiasm and explained that he had been late because of the experiment he was making through which he, he hoped he hoped to be able to grow apples on any sort of tree. Payne chided him, him by reminding him that it was an apple which started all the trouble between man and woman. Darwin chuckled heartily as he suggested that Payne should watch out for the little serpents when he went into the forest to gather apples as they had the habit of growing in, growing into big snakes. Emerson observed, no serpents, no apples, and Napoleon remarked, no apples, no state. Lincoln discovered, uh, developed the habit of always being the last one to leave the table after each meeting. <clears throat> On one occasion, he leaned across the end of the table, his arms folded and remained in position for many minutes. I made no attempt to disturb him. Finally, he lifted his head slowly, got up and walked to the door then turned around, came back, laid his hand on my shoulder and said, my boy, you will need much courage if you remain steadfast in carrying out your purpose in life. But remember, when difficulties overtake you, the common people have common sense, adversity will develop it. One evening, Edison arrived ahead of all the others. He walked over and seated himself at my left, and he walked over to see himself at my left. I just lost my, my vision. Edison, oh, okay. Where Emerson was accustomed to sit and said, you are destined to witness the discovery of the secret of life. When the time comes, you will observe that life consists of great forms of energy, entities, each as intelligent as humans being beings, think themselves to be. These units of life grouped together like hives of bees remain together until they disintegrate through lack of harmony. These units have difficulties or differences of opinion, the same as human beings and often fight among themselves. These meetings which you are conducting will be very helpful to you. They will bring to your rescue some of the same units of life which serve the members of your cabinet during their lives. These units are e eternal. They never die. Your own thoughts and desires serve as, a, as the magnet which attracts units of life from the great ocean of life out there. Only the friendly units are attracted, the ones which, which harmonize with the, the natural or with the nature of your desires. The other members of the cabinet began to enter the room. Edison got up, slowly walked around to his own seat. Edison was still living when this happened and it impressed me so greatly that I went to see him and told him about the experience. He smiled broadly and said, your dream was more a reality than you may imagine it had been. He added no further explanation to his statement. These meetings became so realistic, I, began, I became fearful of their consequences and discontinued them for several months. The experiences uh, were so canny, uncanny, I was afraid if I continued them, I would lose sight of the fact that the meetings were purely experiences of my imagination. Some six months after I had discontinued the practice, I was awakened one night and thought I was thought I was when I saw Lincoln standing at my bedside. He said, "The world will soon need your services. It it is it is about to undergo a period of chaos, which will cause men and women to lose faith and become panic stricken. And go ahead, go ahead with your work and complete your philosophy." This is your mission in life. If you neglect it for any cause, 
whatsoever, you will be reduced to a primal state and be compelled to retrace the cycles through which you have passed during the, the thousands of years. I was unable to tell the following morning whether I had dreamed this or had actually been awake. I have never since uh, found out which it was, but I do know that the dream, if it were a dream, was so vivid in my mind the next day that I resumed my meetings the following night. At our next meeting, the members of my council all filed into the room together and stood at their accustomed places at the council table. Okay, uh, at the council table. While Lincoln raised his glass and said, gentlemen, let us drink a toast to a friend who, have, who has returned to the fold. All right, I'm going to pass it at this point to someone else. I can go. <clears throat> After that, I began to add new members to my, my cabinet until now it consists of more than 50, among them Christ, St. Paul, Galileo, Copernicus, Copernicus, Aristotle, Plato, so so Socrates, <laughs> just think of Socrates, Socrates, Homer, Voltaire, Bruno, Spinoza, Drummond, Kant, Schopenhauer, Newton, Confucius, Albert Hubbard, Brand, Ingersoll, Wilson, and William James. This is the first time that I've had the courage to mention this. Here to four, I have remained quiet on the subject because I knew from my own attitude and connection with such matters that I would be misunderstood if I described my unusual experience. I have been emboldened now to reduce my experience to the printed page because I'm now less concerned about the about what they say than I was in the years that have passed. One of the blessings of maturity is that it sometimes brings one greater courage to be truthful regardless of what those who do not understand may think or say. Lest I be misunderstood, I wish here to state most empath empathetically, emphatically, sorry, that I still regard my cabinet meetings as being purely imaginary, but I feel entitled to suggest that the members of my cabinet may be purely fictional in the meetings existent only in my own imagination. They have led me to, into glorious paths of adventure, rekindle an appreciation of true greatness, encourage creative endeavor, and embolden the expression of honest thought. Somewhere in the cell structure of the brain, is located an organ which receives vibrations of thought ordinarily called hunches. So far, science has not discovered where this organ of the sixth sense is located, but this is not important. The fact remains that human beings do receive accurate knowledge through sources other than the physical senses. Such knowledge generally is received when the mind is under the influence of extraordinary stimulation. Any emergency which arouses the emotions and causes the heart to beat more rapidly than normal may, <clears throat> and generally does, bring the sixth sense into action. Anyone who has experienced a near accident while driving knows that on such occasions, the sixth sense often comes to one's rescue and aids by sense in, avoid in avoiding an accident. These facts are mentioned preliminary, preliminary to the statement of fact which I shall now make, namely that during my meetings with the invisible counselors, I find my mind most receptive to ideas, thoughts, and knowledge which reach me through the sixth sense. I can truthfully say that I owe entirely to my invisible counselors full credit for such ideas, facts, or knowledge as I receive through inspiration. On scores of occasions when I have faced emergencies, some of them so grave that my life was in jeopardy, I have been mirac miraculously guided past these difficulties through the influence of my invisible counselors. My original purpose in conducting council meetings with imaginary beings was solely that, that of impressing my own con subconscious mind through the principle of auto-suggestion with certain characteristics which I desired, which I desired to, oh, I lost it. 
uh, desired to acquire. In more recent years, my experimentation has taken on an entirely different trend. I now go to my imaginary counselors with every difficult problem with, which confronts me and my clients. The results are often astonishing, although I do not depend entirely on this form of counsel. You, of course, have recognized that this chapter covers a subject with which a majority of people are not familiar. The sixth sense is a subject that will be of great interest and benefit to the person whose aim of those whose aim is to accumulate vast wealth, but it need not claim the attention of those whose desires are more modest. Henry Ford undoubtedly understands and makes practical use of the sixth sense. His vast business and and financial operations make it necessary for him to understand and use this principle. The late Thomas A. Edison understood and used the sixth sense in connection with, connection with the development of inventions, especially those involving basic patents in connection with which he had no human experience and no accumulated knowledge to guide him, as was the case while he was working on the talking machine and the moving picture machine. Nearly all great leaders, such as Napoleon, Bismarck, Joan of Arc, Christ, Buddha, Confucius, and Muhammad, understood, understood and probably made use of the sixth sense almost continuously. The major portion of their greatness consisted of their knowledge of this principle. The sixth sense is not something that one can take off and put on at will. Ability to use this great power comes slowly through application of the other principles outlined in this book. Seldom does any individual come into workable knowledge of the sixth sense before the age of 40. More often, the knowledge is not available until one is well past 50, and this for the reason that the spiritual forces with which the sixth sense is so cl closely related do not mature and become usable except through years of meditation, self-examination, and serious thought. No matter who you are or what may have been your purpose in reading this book, you can profit by it with, without understanding the principle described in this chapter. This is especially true if your major purpose is that of accumulation of money or other material things. The chapter on the sixth sense was included because the book is designed for the purpose of presenting a complete philosophy by which individuals may un unerringly guide themselves in attaining whatever they ask of life. The starting point of all achievement is desire. The finishing point is that brand of knowledge which leads to understanding, understanding of self, understanding of others, understanding of the laws of nature, recognition, and understanding of happiness. This sort of understanding comes in its fullness only through familiar, familiarity with and use of the principle of the sixth sense. Hence, the principle had to be included as part of this philosophy for the benefit of those who demand more than money. Um, we'll kick it off to somebody else, wanna read? Volunteers? I can finish this. Okay. 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 Go, Brandon. Go ahead, Brandon. Okay. Having read the chapter, you must have observed that while reading it, you were lifted to a high level of mental stimulation. Splendid. Come back to this again a month from now, read it once more, and observe that your mind will soar to a still higher level of stimulation. Repeat this experience from time to time, giving no concern as to how much or how little you learn at the time, and eventually you will find yourself in possession of a power that will enable you to throw off discouragement, master fear, overcome procrastination, and draw freely upon your imagination. Then you will have felt the touch of that unknown something which has been moving, which has been the moving spirit of every truly great thinker, leader, artist, musician, writer, statesman. Then you will be in position to transmute your desires into their physical or financial counterpart as easily as you may lie down and quit at the first sign of opposition. Faith versus fear. Previous chapters have described how to develop faith through auto suggestion desire, and the subconscious. The next chapter presents detailed instructions for the mastery of fear. Here will be found a full description of the six fears which are the cause of all discouragement, timidity, procrastination, indifference, 
indecision, and the lack of ambition, self-reliance, initiative, self-control, and enthusiasm. Search yourself carefully as you study these six enemies as they may exist only in your subconscious mind where their presence will be harder to detect. Remember too, as you analyze the six ghosts of fear, that they are nothing but ghosts because they exist only in one's mind. Remember also that ghosts, creations of uncontrolled imagination, have caused most of the damage people have done to their own mind. Therefore, ghosts can be as dangerous as if they lived and walked on the earth in physical body. The ghost of the fear of poverty, which seized the minds of millions of people in 1929, was so real that it caused the worst business depression this country has ever known. Moreover, this particular ghost still frightens some of us out of our wits. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for reading, my man. Let me uh, stop the share, cut over here. Welcome uh, everybody, Nia, Joda, uh, Tyrone, Derek, Raiden, Dave. Once again, man, this chapter, this book, this group, this uh, journey, um, it just doesn't stop, man. And it's like, like they say, you may not understand uh, the sixth sense at this point. You may a little bit. When I first read this book, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, first time-ish, I was like, whatever, man, I don't need to know all this to know the sixth sense. But realizing that it just talked about it today, like that layer, man, becomes like thinner and thinner. I'll go this way, <laughs> thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner to like where you, it just, you feel it. You know, there's no, there's no like, there's no brain and there's no heart involved. It's the, it's the feel, it's the knowing, it's the sixth sense, it's the infinite intelligence. It's the experience that we were talking about earlier, Braden, that where it just over time, different things, you can't, we look back to when we were 23, 24, 25, 18, whatever. And it's like, man, if I knew then what I know now, but we weren't ready, we weren't ready, we weren't ready. And this chapter right here is where it really, to me, it dials it all back in because years ago I got into uh, energy healing and Reiki and um, just really opening myself to other facets of energy and vibrations and really tapping into that sixth sense and so the more that you can stay open to this chapter and the more you can stay open to that um just gut that is talking to us at all the times that we try to rationalize things <laughs> that we try to fit it into you know what makes sense in our little brains and just go with what you know that you feel you know there's so much in this chapter. I mean, I could break down different areas for hours. Uh, I'm gonna go back and read it again, just cause it's like, I listened to it three times, I read it once and just heard it again before this call. And each area like keeps different things keep popping out. So I'd love to hear from anybody else. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm gonna say- uh... Go there. The sixth sense is in play all the time. I mean, everything that we're reading is actually playing out. Like the world is the stage, right? You know, anybody looks at a stage, they know you got a set of actors on the stage performing and carrying out various things. And so what we have in this world stage is a set of people that are embracing various forms or aspects or elements that we're reading about, right? And uh, I liken it to sports, right? We, we just, you know, the final four just ended. <clears throat> and so that's just one example. <clears throat> it could be played out in many scenarios, but just use that as an example. There's a point of reckoning when you see a team that realize in a moment, no matter where they're at, 
in the, in the lead or in behind, whatever, there's a point of reckoning that based on what they want to have, their desire, their confidence, their goal, that they have to turn on what's within them, right? And so they, those that are dialed in, right, can then sense and draw in and tap into this reservoir. I look at the, I look at the sixth sense as like a, 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 you're out of gas, your, your dial on your tank says E, but all of a sudden you got, you got gas, but it doesn't make sense because your tank says E. But this was a reservoir, but to get that reservoir open, something had to trigger it, right? To open you up to it so that, 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 you know, if you've ever seen one of those, I've seen it, the first time I was amazed as a kid, they had one of these pictures, they say, it was like a, a image, they say, look at this and you'll see an image pop out. I'm straining, straining to see this thing, like, what are you talking about? I'm looking at it, I don't see anything. And then, boom, have, it, have any of you guys ever seen that? This image pops out. Oh, yeah. And, and, and all of a sudden you're like, and then even after I saw it, it's not easy to see anytime I want to see it. It's not like just because I saw it once, it's just going to automatically be there for me to see again. I had to, I had to adjust me for it to become clear. And, 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 res and so I'm tying that into this, that just like that, all these things was given to us at birth by the design, by the, by the divine creator is for purpose and is available when we are lined up in the proper purpose to activate these things. So, so that's just my two cents. I'm sorry. Right, <laughs> I don't know. Right. Love it, bro. Love it. And, and it's so, it's so, it's so right on because it's, it's that time where you have to you have to have that laser focus, but you also have to have that relaxedness. You know what I mean? Like when you're looking at that that picture that you're trying to come in clear, so you can focus as hard as you want, but it's like kind of when you relax, so you're like, whoa. <laughs> and that's this. It's like, because it's the brain, it's the brain trying to figure it out. When you don't, you just let it do its thing and let that vibration of just like it just it becomes so crystal clear. What you got, Ty Tyrone? I was, I was gonna say that uh, when I first was reading this, and, and, and like I said, to be honest with you, I read the wrong chapter <laughs> initially. <laughs> so, but as I'm reading this, I'm thinking he couldn't have said this to anybody, you know, because he put so many people in there. He's got over 50 people that he's talking to, you know, mentally or whatever. And he, well, he mentioned it himself. He said, there's no way I could tell anybody this because they probably think I'm crazy. Or, or, or out of my mind having these conversations with people that aren't here. And I'm sure that in some instances that we all do that, you know, to some degree, we have conversations with people that aren't there. You know, maybe not 50 people, but we, I mean, for instance, we, we, have, we have prayer, you know, God isn't here, but he's here. You know, Christ, he had Christ in there. So I was just, I was just amazed by, by, by listen to him go through these meetings with all these individuals, imagine individuals. So, I mean, anybody can do it. And, and again, I, I still just amazed how, how long ago this book was written and, and, and it applies to stuff that, you know, we're going through uh, right now, you know? So yeah, that's my little two no, cents. It's, no, it's, I mean, you're, you're spot on brother. Like this is all, everything within this book is, available to us all right now it's not it's timeless it doesn't matter it does feel like it was written yesterday <laughs> or last week or last year or during the pandemic or however far back and these principles just are available to any one of us that chooses to believe to have faith to have desire to have you know to put auto suggestion put the mastermind put all of this in you can't just you know, I equate this to like what I've been doing, you know, nutrition or, you know, in the health and wellness field for 23 years. It's like, it's like network marketing. If you pick and choose 
which areas that try, you try to fit into your life or what you like or what you want and expect the results of someone who's making 100 Gs a month, <laughs> a million a month, or someone who's at peak and optimal uh, health and, and vibrance and feeling, and you just want to do the two, three, four of the of the nine things that you have to do daily because you can't, you don't like broccoli or you don't like cauliflower or you don't like fruits or you don't like salmon or you don't like to peek someone or you don't like to talk to people or you don't like to follow instructions or you don't like to, you know, do detailed work or you don't like to follow up or you don't, it's just, these are all somatics. It's all right here, man. It's, it's in the book. We just have to follow every chapter detailed of what they say to do and most people don't get past chapter two in desire and write down this in the, the six steps and do that daily i'm 90 percent on doing that now on this round like because i got called out <laughs> you know like did you write it down like mm, yes no i mean kind of uh there's no kind of either we did or we didn't and it's always open to revising it doesn't mean what you wrote down the first time you can't think bigger and put something different down that's not it. What it is, is it's hitting the gym every day, even if it's for 10, 15, 20 minutes versus, you know, I said I was going to go for an hour, five days a week, and I've only hit. And then you get into that beating yourself up. No, just go, 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 go. You know, I forgot to read, you know, in the morning the other day, the, the you know, my six, six things. But then I'm like, whatever, I do it tonight and then I back on. And then sometimes I do it three, four times during the day to, to, <laughs> to make up for what I missed. It's just not beating ourselves up. It's not going down that, oh, it's not going to work now or, you know, no, it's available for all of us. <laughs> we just have to follow the course and stay, you know, true to what we said we were going to do in the moment that we said it. So. Yeah. I mean, just like, I mean, to be honest with you, I put down in the chat earlier that you know i was exhausted because i got my little girl with me and my wife is going away so it's just me and her and i'm 58 years old this month and she's four she wears me completely out <laughs> i'm thinking i mean I need, I need some i need some break i need a break so i wasn't gonna get on a call but i was laying here so what, what else am i gonna do i'm gonna sit here and watch tv relax and uh, get on the call ty get on the call brother <laughs> so you know I, I i'm happy i'm enjoying you guys i mean because this is my Imagine not imaginary group, but my imaginary group. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I really appreciate this type of of, of dialogue and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I had to get on, man. <laughs> this diet, the the desire to not do it or do it. You know, so it. there you go. It's one of those, you know. Again, back to the gym analogies. I use them all day long. You getting on here? You, there one one time you get on this call and you don't. You're not glad that you didn't get on. There's not one time somebody comes into my gym and does a workout and says, if I didn't have an appointment with you, I would not have come. But they always say, man, thank you so much when they leave. Nobody's ever had a bad workout, right? I mean, we've all had a workout. <laughs> you ever leave and be like, man, I wish I didn't do that. Never. <laughs> not one time. Not one time. So it's same with this. Like you ever read a book like this? Maybe you don't want to do I'll do it later. Whatever. No, you start reading. You're like, man, I'm so happy I did that. So it's just, it's diving. You know, I, I said it today to a client, I was like, you gotta embrace the suck. <laughs> like this sucks right now, I don't wanna do this. It's whatever that is, I don't wanna eat the salad, I wanna eat the burger. Now embrace the suck. And then all of a sudden you do that over and over again, man, it's like winning, winning, winning. <laughs> you get to keep chalking up on that winning side versus like, all right, and mentally you're like, all right, I, I messed up. I didn't work out today, I ate like shit. I didn't, I got, you know, I had negative thoughts. I was, you know, whatever. I was a heathen today. Whatever the hell it was. <laughs> you get back on course of what you know is right, man, and what you know that, you know, I put a post out today. What fills you up? What makes you feel awesome? What makes you feel amazing? Make that list and live on it. Live in that list. You'll have 30, 40, 50 things that just like that you love to do, whether it's music, dance, read, write, you know, poetry, whatever the heck it is. So Dave, Joda. I, I definitely wanted to take a quick moment to, to uh, thank uh, Braden for coming and joining us. Uh, uh, good to see you here. Uh, glad to see uh, Nia here. Nia's in the background there. Uh, uh, 
And of course, this is my family right here. This this here is is uh, a, a this is this is my physical ghost mm -hmm. and my feel because <laughs> I, I I always see you guys whether I'm on this Zoom or not. It's not like I don't see it because. We just happen to be on the on the same pathway, right? We're on the we on the we, you know, I don't get out and do nature walks much. I did that. I remember the school first time. It was like bizarre, cause I grew up in the concrete jungle. You know, it's like so you know, go out here nature walking, and uh, but you know, it's something about the path, being on a path. You know, and uh, you know, there's a whole lot of life that can be cloudy. Or like you, you feel like it's in a fog or somewhat. But when you know you on a certain path, it don't even matter, even if you're in the fog. And I, I ran I, after I ran that marathon in Chicago, I did I did another half marathon in New Orleans, and literally I felt like cloud was sitting on the road. I couldn't even see the running in front of me. I couldn't even see my stuff, but I was on a certain path. I just kept running on that path and it ultimately led to me finishing. So, um, you know, I'm glad you guys are on this path. And uh, I know this path is taking us somewhere, you know, and to the extent that possible, you know, when somebody can be enlightened or brought along the path, you know, you bring them along, you know, when they're ready, they'll, they'll, they'll get on, they'll strap up and come on board. So anyway, welcome aboard, Braden. Good to see you here. What's up? Hey. hey. Thank you for the uh, the welcome. Can you all still hear me okay? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I got a couple thoughts. First, uh, I do want to say thank you to Tyrone for bringing up the concept of uh, Mr. Hill's counsel and being able to really just kind of converse with that many identities. For me, I think it's a really extreme example, but what um, what stands out the most to me is the fact that he researched these people because he admired them. And he also wanted to take away the characteristics that he wanted to emulate. To me, that sounds like searching for the best and believing in that and sticking to that. You know, that's the dedication, that's the discipline that, um, that Dom was referring to as far as you know, you, you want to quit, you want to give up, but you need to also be believing in the results and developing that type of consistency. So um, I'm just getting into a lot of metaphysics and understanding what that means. But the first book I really read um, just three, four months ago was so foundational to me. And it said, look for the best in everything because the best is in everything. And you know, once you have that mindset, that perspective that it is all for the best for you, then you're winning, 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 you're succeeding. And uh, that's kind of what I took away from this chapter of faith. Faith is a, to me, an acknowledgement of existence. And there's an active component to faith as far as believing in um, believing in what you want to see and, and actively pursuing that and realizing that it also happens to you. You know, it's not just something you, you do, it's something you respond to. It's always a, a bi-directional type of relationship. Um, and that, that also gets me thinking about slightly unrelated, what it means to be a great person, you know, to think and grow rich means you have a, a level of spiritual wealth, but also the ability to turn that into a physical kind of wealth. To me, I think having any type of wealth makes somebody great in a way. Uh, and there are several people who have monetary wealth that they didn't earn, and I wouldn't refer to them as great, but for me to to get on this call right now and embrace people of different backgrounds and locations and an array of different life experiences i'm only 20 years old but i i'm obsessing with 
wanting wealth for my benefit and people around me and obsessing with what it means to be great because you know to your uh your point Derek uh good to see you um it is also the responsibility of great people to lead others to being great you know it's not just uh I'm going to rise above this um, inadequacy or this ignorance. It's I'm going to uplift us, preserve myself first and foremost, because you know that's where that's where the action takes place. That's where all the control is. And I will give you those perspectives. I'll give you those nudges. I won't control your train of thought, but you need to be able to see so you can uplift yourself and this is how i do it so I, i'm i'm very i'm very motivated now that i've read this chapter and gone over it with you all as well because you know it, it recontextualizes what it means for me to be great and that before i thought it was just somehow rising above everyone else but true greatness involves finding ways of bringing people with you um because yeah, you all are definitely right. Like it, it it's a choice um, as to when everyone's ready. Um, or yeah, it's a choice as to when everyone is ready um, because they're presented with the opportunity and everything starts from within. So it, it, it's really cool to just kind of be here and go over and get understanding uh, from each and every one of you because I'm sure you have like so much knowledge to share and experience so i appreciate uh i appreciate being on today and spending some time so thank you for having me letting me read all of that we appreciate you brother i mean absolutely it's, and it's a uh, it's fresh perspectives are always <laughs> welcome and you know there's nothing more fresh than youth and like seeing it through you know your your like i said before the millennials eyes versus you know so much that we've seen that's clouded the filters where you don't have the cloudiness of of what a lot of us have gone through good or bad you know so thank you for being here brother appreciate it jodo dave yeah i'll just hop in real quick i um i think Braden got me thinking more of um well when we've been talking about it you know the the generational you know uh, path yeah, i guess and the way that you know we're all we're all, we're all on our different are on our individual journeys but coming here together you know at the same time to be able to to draw from each other um you know whatever it is that we need to hear we're getting the bits and pieces i mean you guys all know from from going down this personal graph growth path um you know you can you can hear the the same message, you know, over and over and over. And then one day you just, you actually get it, you know, you hear it, you hear it, you hear it, you think you get it, you think you get it. And, and then when you finally do get it, um, you know, you're like, oh, I guess I didn't, I, you understand that you didn't really get it before. And so you're able to, you know, like um, when you're talking to other people, you can kind of it's easier to perceive like where they're at in their journey or, you know, along the path of, of understanding these, these topics. Um, and I'd say, you know, it feels like 99% of people, you know, haven't really even started the journey. Um, so I guess that makes me and should make everybody like very, very proud that, um, we're on this path, you know, so we, we are able to affect other people. Um, you know, I, you know, like I, I was mentioning before, you know, my mom being very negative and, and other people in my life that, you know, um, I just keep, keep putting these seeds of these principles that, that I'm learning, um, in other people's paths so mm -hmm. that, you know, they're, understandably at at a different path and they're you know different point in that journey and i'm just kind of realizing and seeing okay 
um, you know, you can just look back, right. When you have, when you do have the experience, you look back and say, it's exactly, you know, I didn't have any clue three years ago, you know, whatever, however long it is for anybody. And, um, so I think it's just cool to put it in perspective and, and have an understanding that, you know, you're kind of helping somebody in like, you know, like Dom, you helped me, like you were the seeds, you started planting the seeds and then, you know, hopefully you get people to, to pick up and start actually learning for themselves and really, um, you know, taking control of their own, own destiny and understanding and stuff. And, um, a couple of things and just this, in this chapter that I, that I kind of, this, this topic in general, like every time I hear it over and over and over now, especially, um, it really gets me, but I feel like we hear it in almost every chapter in this book. And it just like hits me every time. And this particular line was all men become what they are because of their dominating thoughts and desires. You know, another way we've heard it, you know, we are what we think about basically everything we're putting into this in our minds and through auto suggestion or, you know, reading or these, these think tanks together, which is awesome. Um, you know, you just keep hearing those messages over and over. And that one just like, that one really is like, it's powerful. I believe that one. So yeah, so wholeheartedly. Um, so that's about it for me. <laughs> I love it, brother. And I appreciate it is, all you guys, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate your yeah. feedback and just the, you know, the, yeah, what we all bring is, you know, a different, a different person at the table. Like we just thought, you know, what we just heard about within here. I mean, I'm not saying anybody in here is Buddha or Christ or Confucius or whoever, but we are, but we have learned from them. So we actually become more. Like I was telling someone earlier today, I do healing work. So I do a lot of, hands-on body work and I've learned through being an athlete and being on the receiving side of being my body jacked up so I'm like so I had to learn through the pain to get out of pain to help people get out of pain if that makes sense and it's like well what do you call what you do there's no name I mean there's really no name like the one that I learned majority of my hands-on stuff uh, body work physical work with he learned from his grandparents in the Philippines starting when he was four years old and he was putting hands on people at four years old so you know he started teaching me when he was about in his late 20s to 30 and what do you call it you don't but it doesn't so again it's just the, the accumulation of knowledge that we all become we all become a mutt I'm like I, I look I referred it to another client as it's almost like mixed martial arts. Like there's just, what do they do? They're mixed martial artists, man. They do it all. <laughs> you know, it's all different blends of, of the same, but different and looking at it from different angles because we all have these different, you know, sounding boards or groups of people that get to pour into this. Like, oh, I didn't see it like that. Like Dave said, you, once you hear it, now all of a sudden you hear certain things in every chapter. <laughs> You're like, that's, oh, that's that part. That's that, that's this, or this what you think about my, most you become yes and those negative people that you hear and he's talking about like mom and whatever it's like they talk about it most guess what they're negative <laughs> they there's no way that they can't be if you talk about it all the time so i heard long ago they're like you know since we're making these stories up in our own mind anyway and we're telling the story and we're the director of it why not making an amazing story <laughs> if you're making it up why make up the pot, you know, the negative, like, oh, well, what if this happens, that happened, this happened, well, poor me, I don't have this. No, make up, you know what? Like you said, I am amazing. I am wonderful. I am beautiful. I am all of these because why do I say that and why it's not a conceited thing? I've, I've, I've studied this, I've practiced, I've poured in, I've been that light for other people. And we do it all for other people. So if you do it for other people, it becomes simple to do. As you touch one person, watch what that does. It doesn't take much for someone to acknowledge you to be like, you know what, because you said this or did that, I'm a completely different person. I said that to a client today, 70 years old. This man's worth millions and millions and millions and millions, like probably hundred million. And he's like, you need to write a book. 
I'm like, I know you keep telling me. He's like, no, you do. He's like, you have, you can break stuff down so simply. And I pride myself on that because as we know, confused people do nothing. So you got to make it simple. You got to make it for everybody to understand. I'm not trying to be freaking use these big ass words in the spiritual world or the physical, or the, the, <laughs> all of these to confuse people, make me look like I'm so smart. No, it's not all about that. I want you guys to understand what I've learned. I want to understand what you're saying. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a, uh, it's a path where we all have to just stay on to know that we're doing all of this to help others and more will come. You'll vibrate higher. You'll, you'll connect to other people on these lanes, on these paths that you're talking about. It's so cool that we're all on the same path and we are. It's the journey, but stay on because you're going to get pulled off. You know, one of my best friends and mentors, he always says, you know, every new level has a new devil. Believe it. Every new level has a new devil. So you got to figure out how to handle that devil on each level. They don't want you to go, you know, trust me, the, the devil and all of his people are not happy right now. The six of us are on this line right now. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> they're like, they're going to try to conspire to do something to pull us away. But no, we need to grab more to bring into the circle. All right, go ahead, Joda. I got to run too soon. So, so uh, Graydon, I just want to say welcome. And I uh, just want to say that you talk with a tone and wisdom of somebody twice your age, man. Um, I don't know if anybody else got that vibe from you. And Dave, I just want to say of, of the line that you did, um, for me, it, it's sharing, I guess, the vision that I've always had for myself with the world and being afraid to do that. And what has conspired with my daughter in the benefit dinner and the nonprofit that Dom is going to help me launch. Um, I have this book here um, that is um, not a vision journal. I can't remember what. Byron calls it. It's what wealthy people. It's an idea, uh, like an idea journal. I don't know if what you what you remember, Dom. What D Byron calls it. I forget, but yeah, yeah, but you understand, and yeah. and it, I've gotten ideas and stuff like that, and visions of what I want to do over the next couple months to to help my daughter heal, um, and 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 get the money to to pay for the medical expenses that she needs. And um, I'm just so grateful for this group because it's gotten me through these eight, nine weeks um, of hell, pretty much. And thank God she is healing properly, not what most Western doctors think she should be done. Because last time they basically told her it was in her head and they put her in a psychiatric ward. So. We're here, brother. Yeah. Yep. Like I said, man, it's gonna there's gonna be a lot of things to pull each one of us away, whether it's <laughs> you know, family health, whether it's travel, whether it's business, whether it's you got a headache, whether it's whatever, is you know, get back to this, <laughs> get back to that get back to that list that I said in the beginning of just like really sit down and create a list of all the things that fill you up and make you, you know, feel alive that you love to do and that you know that you know that are amazing for you you know and I made a list if you want to go on my Facebook and just I actually post I actually posted in this one too I think because I could you know said it last week to everyone there's a lot of stuff going around man there's a lot of negativity there's a lot of nastiness there's a lot of you know stuff that we just got through for two and a half years there's been a lot of lies there's been a lot of conniving there's a, but that's not for us to figure out man that unless y'all want to go down that path and that's your journey, that's cool. I support you. But my path, I don't believe any of y'all paths, is to, to be the detective and to be the, you know, the one trying to dig whether this started in Wuhan and the, the you know, the big farmers behind it or the, the politicians or the Trumps or the Bidens or the whoever's it. Stop. Let it all go. Let all the, you know, back to this. Back to think and grow rich and how can we rise another person how can we pull another person up how can we help another person get through the day because there's some people right now that we all know that are struggling that are thinking about suicide that are thinking about they don't know how they can make it another day they don't know how 
you know, they got cancer, they're recovering from cancer, they don't know if they can make it another day. You know, there's old, my client yesterday, 87 years old. He's like, now I've had enough. I'm, I'm like, had enough, she's like, I'm ready to go. Go where? She's like, she's ready to die. But it's a whole different thing. That's an 87 year old who's been through so much in an amazing way, she's actually ready. Who am I to say, <laughs> no, stay here, whatever. I just say, you know what, I don't think, I think you have more. God has more for you. She has more wisdom than anybody that, not anybody, but a lot of people that I've ever trained and she doesn't even really believe it herself. <laughs> even though she's an amazing person, she doesn't love herself. I mean, you gotta love yourself. Say, like, no, I don't love myself. I like myself a lot. You know, I, I don't know. I'm like, no, you have more wisdom. You have more experience. You have more knowledge. You've seen the world. You've been world traveled. She's beat cancer three times. She's had 22 surgeries and she still shows up with a smile every day, 87. I'm like, you got more to share. You got more to share. So, but again, it's not a, uh, that's her journey. Everybody has their own journey, but I do know that the six on here have the capability of changing a nation. It only starts with one, we got six <laughs> and there's more. <laughs> Nia still, you know, Nia and, um, Brian and uh, Christina, there's a whole crew of us. It just, we just have to keep going, man. We keep going together. So I know next week's the last chapter. I'm going to figure out what we're going to do after that. Uh, we are staying, you know, I, I have Wednesday nights planned for, you know, the next 20 years of being on here with y'all for real. Like just because there's so much more that we're bringing to the table. Like I said, in the beginning of this call, I'm gonna stop the recording because I don't want to say anything. But 